In this video, we'll discuss SP hybridization and polyatomic bonding. So to start off, we're going to look at what happens in the bonding in this type of molecule. So we've got a beryllium and two hydrogens, BEH2 would be our molecule here. And this has a linear geometry to it. So each of these hydrogens, uh, each of these BEH bonds are 180 degrees in a bond angle relative to one another. So moving from diatomic molecules to polyatomic molecules now, the question is how do we uh, use the valence orbitals of these atoms that are participating in these bonds to generate the correct kinds of orbitals for optimal bonding? So if we start off by looking at our beryllium, so our beryllium has four total electrons. Two of those are gonna be in the 1s core orbital, and then two of them are gonna be in our valence. And our valence for beryllium is the n equals 2 level, where we have the 2s, circular there, 2px, 2py, and 2pz orbitals. I have these axes here labeled as x, y, and z. Um, typically, if your molecule is linear, it's going to be the z axis that is defined as the molecular axis. But uh, just pay attention that whatever diagram you're using follows that convention. So my PZ orbital here is along the Z axis, PY along the Y axis, and PX along the X axis, with PX and PY both being perpendicular to our molecular axis here. For our hydrogens, they each have one electron, and that is in its valence shell, which is just the 1s orbital. So these are all of our valence orbitals, 1s, 2s, 2px, 2py, 2pz, and 1s, with this other 1s being core. So as I said, the 2px and 2py orbitals are uh, perpendicular to our molecular axes. So those are actually orthogonal to these orbitals in our hydrogens. So they're orthogonal, meaning that their net overlap is zero in this kind of direct notation uh, integral. So what that means is that 2px and 2py in our beryllium are gonna be non-bonding orbitals. So any electrons in those orbitals are not going to contribute to the net bonding between the beryllium and the hydrogen. Also, as I mentioned, the 1s orbital of beryllium is occupied with two electrons, and it is a core orbital because that 1s orbital is being held much more tightly and much more closely to the nucleus than the higher energy, more diffuse 2s orbital, which is big enough to overlap with the other uh, uh, atoms to produce some net bonding. So the 1s of our hydrogens, the 2s of beryllium, and the 2pz orbital of beryllium are, are what we're going to call our bonding orbitals. So now the question is, how do we arrange these orbitals such that we're going to get orbitals that are not only optimally aligned to be oriented for good overlap to form good bonding, but also how do we maintain them uh, being orthogonal to one another. So my total wave function here for each of our orbitals that we construct here is going to be a linear combination of these four orbitals. So I have a coefficient times the 2s orbital plus a coefficient times the 2pz plus a coefficient for each 1s orbital from each hydrogen. So what we're going to do here to make uh, some orbitals from our central atom which are orthogonal to one another so we're going to create what are called sp orbitals. So I have a normalization constant, 1 over the square root of 2. It's going to normalize my total uh, sum here. And we have two different orbitals, one where we take 2s plus 2pz, and one where we take 2s minus 2pz. So in the first case, <clears throat> we're going to have these two overlap and add together constructively. So on this side, the positive of the S overlaps with the positive of the PZ, and we get a lobe which is elongated in this direction and shrunk in the other with opposite signs. The nucleus being indicated with the yellow dot as I have in this diagram over there. And the opposite case where they're subtracted from one another, where I'm going to flip the sign on PZ, so now it's going to it's going to constructively overlap on this side and destructively overlap on the other side. So this gives me the mirror image uh, 180 degrees from my other orbital here. So now these two orbitals are orthogonal to one another, and they're both optimally oriented to form a bond with one of the hydrogen atoms or the other. This one extends to the left, forming good overlap with our hydrogen over here. This one extends to the right, 
forming good overlap with our hydrogen over here. So each of these would be referred to as sp orbitals because they are an equal weighted mixture of an s orbital and a p orbital from the valence shell of our central atom here. 50% s, 50% p, giving us sp. So those sp orbitals, as I mentioned, can then overlap with the 1s orbitals of our external hydrogen atoms. So we have one on the right here, which can overlap there and form a bonding interaction. In, these orbitals are in the same phase. They overlap and interfere constructively. There's a buildup of electron density between the two nuclei, and that is what a chemical bond is. And similarly, we have the constructive overlap on the left of the other sp orbital with the other 1s hydrogen atom forming a bond on the left. And the other way that these can form, because we're putting four total orbitals in here between our two 1s's, our 2s, and our 2pz. So four orbitals in means, means we need four orbitals out. So we have two bonding orbitals that result. So there are also going to be two antibonding orbitals that result. So the opposite is when I have the reversed uh, polarity of my sp orbital here, then there's going to be a destructive interference here, a depletion of electron density, and a node is going to build up where there's no electron density between these two atoms. That's going to be an antibond because it's, contribu it's contributing destructively to the bonding between those two. And the same thing on the left. So this is the basis into hybridization. Uh, we're also going to see this for uh, cases where our central atom has three external hydrogens or four, and eventually lone pairs and some other things. So this is the basic introduction to hybridization, where we take some of the valence orbitals of a central atom, mix them together to form orthogonal orbitals pointing towards our external atoms, and those in the end form bonding and antibonding orbitals which our electrons can occupy to give the bonding we need in order to hold the molecule together.